So now that we have got this clear for a general matrix, it is rectangular, it is you know uh, this particular result here, we talked about a fat matrix and we have sh we've shown you that you will always have a non-zero solution, okay. Let us now turn our attention towards square matrices and see what we can say, okay. So now let us say Ax is equal to 0 is still the equation in focus, but now this A is a square matrix. All right. We will get back to the rectangular case once we have covered this because there are a couple of in interesting and important observations to be made for the case when it is square, okay. So we are going to make this first claim about this system, okay. So when I use a symbol like this, it means it is an if and only if condition, it is a both sided implication, okay. It means it is necessary and sufficient, quite uh, counterintuitively it might appear, although while saying we say necessary and sufficient if and only if, but if actually corresponds to sufficiency, only if corresponds to necessity, yeah. Just think about the semantics, the language a bit and you will be clear, right. So when something is sufficient, you say if this is true, then this happens. It will definitely happen if this is true, but it if only if this is true, then this happens. Then it's a necessary condition. It means if it doesn't happen, right, when you are saying sufficiency, it means that you are probably being a little more conservative. You are making more leeway, more room for things, and saying okay, okay, at least if this much is there, then it is guaranteed to happen. And in the process, you might be actually laying out more requirements than are necessary. But when you are saying something is necessary, it means if you take even the slightest amount of uh, those constraints away, then that fact won't happen, that fact won't follow, right. So that's necessity, the only if part, the sufficiency, the if part. When I write symbols like this, it generally implies if and only if, sufficient and necessary implies both ways. It's the same symbol, right, linguistically or symbolically. So what I'm going to ma now make a claim for is the following. So let us say we have R, R, E, F of A is equal to the identity, okay. It is a square matrix. So R, R, E, F of identity, R, R, E, F being identity means it has no zero rows. Yeah, every row has a leading one. This is tantamount to saying it turns out that the only solution to Ax is equal to 0 is x is equal to 0, okay, a very important result. So how do we go about proving this? We have to prove both sided, right? We cannot just prove one side of it because it is a both sided implication. So how do we start? We have to assume one of the sides is true and then prove the other and reverse the process and do the other, same with the other, right? So let us say, so I will give you a sketch of the proof. Suppose R, R, E, F of A is equal to identity. What does this mean? that there must be a series of row operations that takes you to the identity, yeah. So there exists M such that M inverse exists and M A is equal to identity, right. So consider a x is equal to 0 and m a x is equal to m 0 which is nothing but 0. You agree, I hope 
that this and this are equivalent systems of course follows from the definition. It is equivalent is not it because that is how you get equivalent systems through non singular p multiplications right these are tantamount to row operations. In fact this is not just any arbitrary m this is a series of elementary row operations which have been brought up together to get this m but we do not even need that now. What we can say is therefore let me erase this part and continue the proof here. So the proof continued here. What can we then say that a x is equal to 0 what is m a x it is identity times x and identity x is equal to 0 are therefore equivalent systems right. So what is the solution set of the second equation. So solution set of i x is equal to 0 is s given by x such that i x is equal to 0 which is nothing but x such that x is equal to 0. So that is the only solution right. Now if this set is the same as the solution set of this this is also equal to solution set of a x is equal to 0. So therefore a x is equal to 0 also has only a single solution which is x is equal to 0 the trivial solution and nothing more than that because that is our definition that is the way we have described it. When you cook up equivalent systems they share the same solution sets like we have proved in the previous lecture right. So one side of the proof is done. Okay, good. We will now try to complete the other side in this area. So now we have to assume the opposite. We have to show that the RREF is identity when in fact AX is equal to 0 has only one solution. Okay. So suppose <coughs> AX is equal to 0 has only x is equal to 0 as its solution right. Now what do we have to show? We have to show that R R E F of A is equal to identity. What we shall do is we shall assume the con contrary. So these are proof techniques that you should familiarize yourselves with. So suppose that the RREF of A is anything but the identity yeah. So let us suppose not hmm? which means that suppose despite the fact that AX is equal to 0 has only X is equal to 0 as its solution the RREF of A turns out to be something other than the identity. We will have to contradict this, we will have to prove that this is an absurd proposition, it cannot be true. So let us try and oppose this. So suppose RREF of A is not equal to identity, that is RREF of A is not equal to identity. What then could it possibly be? See it can have at most n pivot variables. If it has n pivot variables by the pigeonhole principle because k1 is strictly less than k2 is strictly less than k3 it must be only the identity. The only way that this is not the identity is if you have fewer than n what pivot elements. So that means there exist r less than n pivot variables or you can say leading ones. What is the total number of variables then? n. The number of pivot variables strictly less than n. Therefore, there exist 
free variables. But that is absurd, right? Why? Because we have already assumed that Ax is equal to 0 can have only the 0 solution. Now, the moment you allow, the moment you allow free variables, you are basically allowing non-zero solutions to this equation, yeah, because this means that x not equal to 0, okay, let us say there exists x not equal to 0 such that Ax is equal to 0, which is a contradiction. So, where does this contradiction arise from? From the fact that we have assumed it is not the case. So, the only possibility is that the rho reduced echelon form of A has to be nothing but the identity, right. So, therefore, it is an if and only if condition. This claim that we have talked about here is an if and only if condition, right. Any doubts? Please ask. Okay. So next, we are still going to dwell on this Ax is equal to 0 with A being square and we are going to look at another equivalence. I hope I can erase this part, okay. Okay, we are going to have another equivalent condition which is R R E F of A is equal to identity and it means that there exists A bar such that A bar A is equal to A, A bar is equal to identity which means that is another way of saying that A has an inverse because this is the definition of the existence of an inverse. If there exists an A bar such that A bar A is equal to A, A bar is equal to identity, it is an inverse. Right? So, that means A is invertible. The point that I am making is if the RREF of a matrix is the identity, then it is invertible. Again, it is an if and only if condition. So, it is only fair that we prove both sides of this assertion, okay. So, suppose we start with, okay, let us say we start with any of those two sides. Suppose we start with R R E F. So, suppose R R E F of A is equal to identity. Okay, I might not have erased it as it turns out because the first few steps are going to be exactly the same. This implies there exists M such that M inverse exists and M A is equal to, so I am not writing the sizes of these matrices, I hope you understand that M is also a square matrix of size N cross N, yeah, such that this is true, all right. Now already I have one part of it, what I mean by that is M A is identity. If I can show that A M is also identity, then M would be exactly the candidate for the inverse, is it not? Right. So, look at A M next. So, based on what we know, we go into the unknown, okay. So, this is where we start. So, M A is equal to identity implies, I am going to just hit it with an M on the right and say M A M because of the associativity of the multiplication of square matrices yeah, or any matrix for that matter. I can actually combine them in any way I like and this is going to be I times M is equal to M. Let us continue that here. I am going to now continue it here. So, what do we have? Now, instead of taking this M A, I am going to take this A M and I am going to write M times A M 
is equal to m. Now, of course, this fellow m definitely has an inverse. I may not know about whether a has an inverse or not, but m definitely has an inverse by dint of this step that I have assumed here. I mean, I have not assumed it, this is true. If it has to have an RRDA form, then there must be a non-invertible matrix which hits this A and takes it to the identity. Hmm? So, what can I say? Let us hit it with, I am not writing all the steps, you can fill in the blanks in between. I am just hitting it with M inverse on the left on both sides. So, I am just hitting it with M inverse M, A M is equal to M inverse M. Right? And what turns out? Immediately I have the implication, these are pulverized into identity. So, I have A m is equal to identity. So, I already have m a is equal to identity. Now, I have A m is equal to identity. All that I need to show is that the inverse of a matrix is unique. And then m is the inverse. Up until this point, I can maybe say m is an inverse of A. If I want to claim it is the inverse of A, I need to show that it is unique. I mean, for any matrix, if you have both left and right inverses, the matrix's is, matrix is inverse must be unique. I'll leave that to you as an exercise to show. Okay, try that. Okay, it's not very difficult. It's something similar to what we have done in the previous lecture when we showed this left and right inverse. Yeah, very similar. So take that as an exercise. Show that the inverse of a square matrix is unique. If you do show that, then you will know based on this exercise that M is the inverse of A. So, I have actually shown more than what this claims. This claim says that this must be invertible. I have also given you a constructive method of actually explicitly saying what that inverse will be. It is exactly that matrix which takes it to the identity in the RREF form. So, the RREF is identity, it is invertible. But now I need to show the other way as well. So, now my starting point is that there exists, okay, suppose there exists A bar such that A bar A is equal to A, A bar is equal to identity. Yeah? How do you think we will go about this? What is the step? So, what is the first step that we do? How do we address this? How do we prove that the RREF, because the inversion process, yeah, we do not yet know what, what to do. Remember, you cannot use this fact now. That will be like the chicken and egg type of thing, right? Circular logic. So, you have to know that how to massage this to an equivalent condition for the RREF being identity. We have already seen one such condition just a while back. If I can show that this immediately leads to the implication that Ax is equal to 0 has only the trivial solution. Is that not also an equivalent condition for the RREF of A being identity? So, I will address it in an indirect fashion. Instead of showing that whenever you have an inverse for A, the RREF will be identity, I will show instead an equivalence condition of the RREF being identity, which is just what I proved a while back. So, now let us reset my goal to the following that if this is given, I am required to show that the solution of Ax is equal to 0 must be x is equal to 0. How do I do that? So, what is your suggestion? How, how do I go about this? So, let us start with Ax is equal to 0. And then, so consider Ax is equal to 0. Then what happens? So, because this inverse exists, I can hit it with an inverse here, right? And that is a non singular matrix. So, it does not change, does not alter the condition. Yeah? So, I can just say A bar A 
x is equal to a bar 0, which is nothing but 0. That is an implication. Let us continue it here. And therefore, we have i x is equal to 0, which implies that x cannot help but be 0. But this just a while back we have shown is equivalent to saying that R R E F of A is the identity. So therefore, it is it works both ways. In summary, in view of all that we have discussed so far, we can say that the following conditions are equivalent. What are they? R R E F of A. So let us say for A which is a square matrix n cross n r r e f of a is equal to identity then a x is equal to 0 has a unique solution given by x is equal to 0 and a is invertible yeah so that's the big result probably i should box it that's what we have seen right a very important result in linear algebra for uh, square systems something that you're already familiar with i'm sure but you may not have looked at it in this fashion you might have looked at those determinants and the explicit formulae for inverses. This does not talk about how to find the inverse, well explicitly at least in terms of some formula like using determinants and adjugates and stuff, yeah, but it still says the same thing, yeah, any of these checks would suffice, okay. This is clear, any doubts so far? All right. <coughs> 